Greetings, everyone. This is Mr. Mall. Today, we're going to do a podcast on sig fig operations. So now that you've learned how to count sig figs, what's going to be important is when we take measurements, we have to do something with those measurements. Typically, we'll involve them in some series of calculations, um, and it turns out that when we measure things, the error and uncertainty associated with those measurements has to carry through when we do calculations. So we're going to talk about the different kinds of calculations that we're going to have to, to um, we're going to have to look at to find out how many sig figs can be in our final answer. So the very first type of problem we're going to look at is addition and subtraction. The first step is going to be to do the math. Um, so here's a problem, 220 plus 12.5 plus 6.75. We can punch that in our calculator. The problem is calculators don't take into account significant figures or error in measurement. So what we have to do is we need to figure out which one of these three measurements has the least precision. So just looking at uh, the decimal place and the last measured digit or the last significant digit, um, 6.75 is much more precise than 220 because 220, if you, if you remember the rules for sig figs, the last sig fig there that we actually measured was that 2. Uh, that's in the tens place. For 6.75, um, you have something all the way out to the hundreds place. So what I like to do to find the least pre uh, precise measurement, okay, we know it's this one, but what I like to do is I like to line them up. So what I might do is something like this, 220 milliliters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these in relation to the decimal point. Okay, so this number here, I can't actually put a decimal point there because that would make it three sig figs instead of just two. So I'm going to go ahead and line up my 12, 0.5 milliliters. Okay, notice that my decimal where it would be in the number 220. Um, that zero is important, it's just not significant. Okay, we're going to line that up and then we're going to put 6.75 ml. So I'm going to go ahead and add all these together. Now if I punch into my calculator, um, I'm going to get something that looks like this. 239.25 milliliters. Now, if you put this as an answer on the test, it's not going to be right because our calculators do not know how to account for significant figures. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that last significant digit uh, or our, our digit in our least precise measurement, our last measured digit in our least precise measurement, and we're going to have to stop our answer at that decimal place. So I'm going to draw a line down. And so this line means I need to stop my answer at this decimal place here, okay, where this 3 is. So I look behind that and I see a 9. So what the 9 is going to do is it's going to have to round that up to 240. Now I can't just chop off the number completely because then it'd be 24. It's not 24, it's 240. So I'm going to go ahead and write 240. Notice that there's two decimal places here. This goes to the, uh, to the tens place in my final answer, which was the same um, as my least precise measurement and went to the tens place. So we're going to have to round it to 240 and remember that last zero. Uh, there's no decimal here, so that's not significant. Okay, so we have our uh, two decimal places. So 240. Okay, simple enough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to do uh, multiplication and division problems next. Okay, the main rule of all of these is Whatever you put into, whatever your weakest measurement is, if you have a bad measurement going in, then you're going to have to have a bad final answer coming out. Our final answer can only be as good as our weakest link or the measurement that had the least precision. Um, you put bad in, you get bad out. The same rule actually applies to multiplication division. So multiplication division problem, we're going to start by doing the math. Um, when we do the math, we can punch all this in our calculator, but we need to look at these measured data, and we need to actually look at just uh, how many sig figs are in each one first off. Multiplication division has nothing to do with decimal place or the least precise measurement. Multiplication division always deals with number of sig figs. So the first step I do is I just count them up. So I look at this first number, I see no decimal, so I make a number sandwich. Uh, I have two sig figs there. And then I see a decimal here, first number to the end, I have three sig figs. And then I see a decimal here, first number to the end is another three sig figs. So when I get a final answer, uh, the bad in, bad out rule applies. So my 
worst instrument that I measured could only measure out two sig figs, so my final answer must have two sig figs also. Okay, it has nothing to do with decimal place or uh, decimal place here. Now, coincidentally, uh, this happens to have the lowest sig figs and the lowest decimal place. Um, but that's just a coincidence, okay? So it's all about the number of sig figs for multiplication or division. So I punch all this in. My calculator punches out an answer of 18,562.5. Now, I can't have that many sig figs. In fact, there's no way with this bad instrument that I can possibly know that the answer is going to be that, have that much information. So what I have to do is I have to take and look at my second sig fig, which is this 8. Because there's a 5 behind it, I'm going to round that up. So I'm going to round this to 19,000. I can't just get rid of those numbers. But because there's only two sig figs, I just have to put zeros with no decimal as placeholders uh, to say that that's going to be 19,000. If I wanted to, I could put this in scientific notation, 1.9 times 10 to the fourth. But this is fine. For right now, typically if numbers are greater than a thousand, we usually put them in scientific notation. So you could put 1.9 times 10 to the to the fourth, uh, and that would be okay too. Okay, so this is multiplication and division. Now remember, your calculator does not do sig figs, so uh, keep that in mind. Speaking of calculators, what I want to talk about is some calculator tips that you're going to need. Okay, the first calculator trick is um, this is just a standard calculator. Most of you will have something that looks kind of like this. I want to bring your attention to a way to punch this in your calculator. Now most people are probably going to punch in 2.86 and they're going to say times 10 and they're going to put a little caret and they're going to push this negative sign and they're going to go negative 6. Now this is okay, but when we start using lots of different numbers, if you do it this way and you start multiplying and dividing, make sure you put it in parentheses. Otherwise, when you start putting other uh, functions in here, order of operations might might move some stuff around on you. So it's really important to put that in parentheses if you're going to do it this way. An easier way, uh, which is a super nice way to do this, is 2.86. And instead of typing in all this stuff here, I'd like you to look at the calculator and the second and then this little comma button. And there's an EE there. If you type in second E, this little comma button, it's going to show a little E on your calculator. Okay, 2.6e. And then you can just type in after that negative 6, go back to that negative button again, and this is the exact same number. Okay, So that little e is just taking that times 10 to the and just kind of making it a nice uh, symbol function. If you do it this way, you don't need parentheses. So uh, just a handy trick. And just remember, your calculators don't automatically do sig figs, so whatever you do, don't just write what your calculator says. Okay, so what we're going to look at next uh, is a little bit of uh, review for exponential form. So what I'm looking at are two numbers here. Now, they're both in exponential form, but notice how the powers of 10 are actually different. Okay, And what that means, if I look over here to the right, if I were to expand that out to, general, uh, to, to regular notation, notice how different those numbers are. Now normally, when, when he said I was going to add and subtract, I just lined up my decimals kind of like this, and I went from there. The problem is, is if you line up the decimals here, 2.98 and 1.3, well, you can't really do that. Because when I actually expand the number, that 2 and that 1 don't line up anymore. So you're going to have to either expand it out, or what I like to do, oops, what I like to do is I like to um, I like to rewrite one of these numbers in terms of the other. That's what I mean by that. I just mean I need to get these to the same exponent. So, uh, rule of thumb, it's always easier to go to the bigger exponent, convert to the bigger exponent, and you're going to find what that does is it, it, it makes our final answer already be in scientific notation. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this 10 to the, to the 6. I need to get that to 10 to the 8. So this has to go up. This has to go up by 2 powers of 10. Now to make this number the same, if this goes up, then this 1.3, okay, if this is going up, this is bigger, this one's actually going to have to go down to make up for it. So I'm going to make this number smaller by bringing the decimal back two places. So this is going to change my number to 0 0.013 
times 10 to the 8. Now they have the same. Now the opposite would be true. If I had to drop an exponent, um, then this other guy would have to be bigger to make up for it. So once I have that written there, I'm going to go ahead and add now my other one, 2.98. Now I can line these up because they have that shared exponent. Okay. And now I can do business as usual with addition subtraction. So we find the least precise measurement. Um, so this one here goes out to the thousandths place. That's pretty specific. 2.98 only goes out to the uh, hundredths place. So our answer has to stop at that least uh, specific decimal place, okay, that least precise measurement, my last significant digit there. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2. Point, uh, give me one second, 993 times 10 to the 8th. Notice, this is already in scientific notation. If you were to, to drop and change the exponent to, let's say, both of them to 10 to the 6th, this number might be like 29 or 0.29, and you'd have to shift things around again to get it back to standard scientific notation. So my rule, you don't have to do this, but I would usually always go the smaller exponent, make it bigger, um, shrink down this other guy, get them to the same exponent, add, and go about. So now I look at my final answer. I need to round off at this point here, 2.99 times 10 to the 8th, final answer. Notice that 3, I had to round it. Uh, I, I couldn't round it up, so I just had to drop it off. Okay, It wasn't 5 or greater. All right, that's almost it. Um, I just want to talk about one more quick little hint. Um, exponents. Okay, so when we're multiplying, a quick rule of thumb. Remember, there's that little math trick you guys learned about. Uh, when I have the same exact base raised to a different power of 10, Remember, if we're multiplying, that means we can add the exponents. Okay, so 2.98, I multiply that by 1.3. Um, I'm going to get an answer around 3-ish. Okay, um, so I have multiplication division problem. I have two sig figs here, three sig figs here. So my final answer needs two sig figs. So I multiply 2.98 times 1.3. Punch that in my calculator really fast. 2.98 times 1.3. Uh, we're going to get 3.874. Okay, so I'm going to round that off to two sig figs. We're going to stop it there. Um, and then I'm going to do what with those exponents? I'm going to add them together. So we're going to go ahead and change this to, we're going to round this up to 4. Um, nope, just kidding. <laughs> we're going to round this up to 3.9. Um, so 3.9, two sig figs, times 10 to the 6 plus 8 is 14th. Times 10 to the 14th. So remember those tricks you learned in algebra about exponents. Same story down here. 2.98 divided by 1.3. Because I have the same base, I can just play with the exponents. Okay, You don't have to worry about getting them to the same. So 2.98 divided by 1.3 gives me 2. Point gives me 2.29, 2, 3, and a whole bunch of other numbers. Um, division problem, so I look at um, number of sig figs is 2 and 3. So for multiplication division problem, remember we always look at the lowest number of sig figs. It's going to be our decider. So I need two sig figs here. So 2 point, I have to stop my answer here, so that's going to round up to 3. 2.3 times 10 to the now, when I have the same base and I'm dividing, instead of adding my exponents, can I just subtract them? 8 minus 6 gives me 2, times 10 to the 2. So, just a refresher on uh, exponents. And last but not least, combination problems. Um, what you're going to do with these problems, you'll run into one or two of them on there. Use order of operations and do it one step at a time. So I'm looking at this problem here. I see that I have to do an addition problem here, addition or subtraction problem. And then I see it turns into a division problem. So actually, I have to use two different sets of rules. So what you have to do is kind of do like little pieces one at a time, uh, round off as you go to the correct number of sig figs, and then round again at the end as you need to. 
So what do I mean? Okay, so 52.5 plus 62.7. You know, maybe you want to add that up because we're addition subtraction now. We're going back. So the first set of rules I have to look at, I have to go by least specific decimal place or the least precise instrument uh, measurement. In this case, they both go to the, the same decimal place. So I'm just going to stop my answer there. So I add those two up, 52.5 plus 62.7 gives me 115. We're going half the page here, 115.2. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to leave all four of those significant figures because remember, it's decimal place that's important. So now I have a new problem. 115.2 divided by 1.445. So now it's a division problem. I have to use the other set of rules. Four sig figs divided by four sig figs. Um, and I divide that answer out. 115.2 divided by 1.445. And we're going to get our answer. 79.72. Uh, and I'm going to stop my answer there because the number after 2 is below 5. And I only need four sig figs in my answer. And that comes from this division problem set of rules I used. Okay, we'll talk a lot, a lot more about this when we correct this worksheet tomorrow. But this is a start. So I hope you found this helpful. And I, I will see you guys tomorrow morning.